Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. We're moving right along on this staircase and now it is time to install our balusters. This is a little bit of a weird install because these balusters are specced to go in horizontally. Yes, that is code in my area. Yes, I know kids can climb on them, but that's what they want, so that's what they're gonna get. So how do you go about getting these 9 16 diameter rods in between two posts that are already stationary? We'll take a look at that and show you some uh, tips and tricks on how to do this uh, horizontal area. Then we've got the rake handrail to do in the basement also. When it comes to laying out balusters, layout is a really big deal. You do not want to make a mistake and you want to ensure that you've got equal spacing the whole way across. So there's two things that I'm doing to help me with that and help me to be efficient and fast. Number one is I'm using a story stick. This is just a rip of one by at about an eighth of an inch. And then I've got marks on this every so often. That way I can just set this stick down on my shoe rail and transfer the marks onto each post. Repetition and having a story stick like this reduces the chance of errors. If I pull out my tape measure and I try to make a mark, the likelihood of me missing an inch or something like that is really high. So if you can use a story stick to keep everything exactly the same and prevent errors, it's always a good bet. The second thing that'll really speed up your baluster layout is to use a baluster calculation app like I've got here. Now essentially what we wanna do is take our measurement from the top of the shoe rail to the underside of the handrail. Now you want to select flat run on the bottom of your screen, not rake. We'll go flat run and you input, input your measurements. I want a max spacing of four inches right there. My baluster width is 9 16 of an inch. So you just select that right there. And then you put in the length of the run, which in my case is 36 inches. And then you just simply hit calculate results. Now you'll see uh, a few different things that it gives you. Number of balusters, eight. Space between balusters, four and a 16th, that's center to center. Number of spaces, nine. Space between balusters, three and a half. Code is gonna be four inches on the flat here, so we're good there. And now it gives you your measurements and you can lay out your centers um, just going down this line of numbers and that is your center measurement. So it really speeds things up. From there, I know my post is three and a half inches. So I'll set my double square at an inch and three quarters and just mark a center line down the post. That's quick and easy to find the center. And then you would just take your story pole here and mark across your lines the whole way. Note that I do have the bottom with marked with a B on the bottom here. So after you get one post done, you can just move over to the next one and it makes it really quick to lay out all these posts. When it comes to drilling these baluster holes, I wasn't sure exactly how this was going to go. Um, you kind of just have to roll with the punches, but I knew my outside diameter was 9 16 and I needed to be able to slide it in far enough at a slight angle to get past this post and then take it back. So we're going an inch of depth on this side, pushing it all the way in and then bringing it back a half inch this way. So we're gonna have a half inch of each of these rods inside the post. So the question is, am I gonna be able to just drill a 9 16th hole and have enough play to push this baluster in and get it positioned the other way? You might be able to do that, but if you can't and you find there's too much tension, you can use your half inch Forstner bit to hollow out the inside of the hole a little bit to give you more space. If you find that you want a little bit more room inside your hole, we can make it bigger without making the actual outside of the hole bigger by using a Forstner bit like this. So I'll just carefully put it in the hole. Now 
Now that created a lot more space in there to where now I can really put this in at an angle and it's got a, it's got just a lot more play on the inside of the hole. So now with this hollowed out on the inside, it gives me a lot more ability to put the rod in at an angle instead of having to try and go straight on with it and it'll be a lot easier to install. Some of you have probably also drilled with a spade bit like this and then rocked the bit at an angle to give yourself a little bit more room. I will do that on the underside of a handrail where it's not visible, but right here, if I do that, it's gonna make this hole into an oval shape too much and it's not gonna have a tight fit all the way around the baluster. So I don't wanna do that in this case. That's why using a Forstner bit allows you to get in there and cut some of that wood out without damaging that perfect outside circle right here. These rods come with a hole on the end because they're hung whenever they're powder, powder coated. So the first thing that I'm going to do is cut off the ends so that we get rid of all these holes. It'd be a bad deal if I put one of these rods in and the hole was still visible.
One thing, this is a new bandsaw for me. I really like it. Um, it's their Atomic bandsaw by DeWalt, but uh, I didn't have tape on the sled here or the base, and I got a little bit of scratching happening, so I did add some blue tape on that. Should have done that before I started cutting these balusters. Well, I've got my layout done for the locations of these holes for these rake balusters. Now this is a lot trickier because whenever you drill these holes with your spade bit, you've got to ensure that your drill stays at the exact angle of the rake. If you don't, whenever you go to insert the baluster, it'll want to either shoot down or shoot to the side and there will be tension there and it'll be hard to get it to fit. So we really need to try and match this angle as well as we can. Here's the thing, there are all kinds of fancy things that I could do to drill these holes, fancy jigs, um, jigs that I could buy that would, that would make my drill bit go in perfectly straight, but I've got 10 holes to do here. I don't wanna mess with anything fancy, so we're just gonna use a pitch block. A pitch block is cut at the angle of the rake, as you can see right here. This handrail is cut at 37 and a half degrees, so really easy to cut a block. And you're just gonna use that block as a reference point as you drill. And every so often, stop drilling, put your block up there, and make sure that you're going in at the proper angle. keep the balusters from rattling or anything. I'm just using a little bit of adhesive in each of these holes. It's basically just to give it a little bit of stickiness in there so that it doesn't twist, spin, move, just kind of stays in place. These are paint grade posts, so if a little bit of white squeezes out, it's not a big deal. But I didn't really feel like using PL Premium and having to deal with the huge mess everywhere. Then grease stains and everything else all over the balusters, so just using a little bit of this stuff.
Well, that's it. That's how we put in our horizontal balusters. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I also did videos on how to install these solid wood newel posts as well as the hardwood stair treads and risers. So if you didn't catch those videos, be sure to check those out also. But as always, give the video a thumbs up, drop a comment. It helps uh, the algorithm push this out to more people and uh, appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next video.